How's it going, boys? Today we are breaking historic with a mathematically perfect, algorithmically sensational, crystal energy infused, salt lamp licking Ugin deck. Oh, yes. Now, Ugin decks have uh, gotten out of popularity. That is undeniable at this point. And by the way, uh, Ugin obviously Olmog. But. I don't know how I didn't think about this, but also, then again, no one else also seemingly thought about this because I never saw Platinum Angel being played in the main deck. Ugin decks have one big weakness. It's the fact that you can't uh, can't win on turn 4 usually, uh, but other decks like, for example, Goblins and Green Goblins can. But Platinum Angel gives you at least a shot at winning against those decks. Because those decks usually have zero creature removal, aka Platinum Angel just flat out wins the game. And otherwise, Ugin decks are extremely simple and strong. So we have your basic Ram Guardian, uh, Guardian Idols, Mind Stones, Power Stone Shards, Hedron, Arca Archives. This is enough ramp for a whole city. Then you have Karn. Karn is so you can get uh, things from the sideboard. The only things that are a must in the Karn sideboard are Grab Digger's Cage, uh, Sky Sovereign Console Flagship because this thing is amazing, and God Pharaoh's Statue because God, God Pharaoh's Statue also kind of wins you the game in a lot of cases. So yeah, that's why Karn's there. And Grab Digger's Cage obviously stops any kind of uh, Ragdos shenaniganry. Then you have Forsaken Monument, which is no longer, by the way, a must to draw if you want to play this deck properly. Sure, it does allow you to get, like, Ugin and Ulamog on turn, like, five, uh, 5 or 4, both of them out, which is kind of insanely powerful, but let's be real. You just need one Ugin or just one Ulamog to win the game. And again, this is kind of like one of the more competitive style of decks, even though it is a little bit forgotten. And, well, I hate playing against it, but I do like playing it. Which is literally everything in Magic, let's be real here. Uh, we have three of the Ugins and Feebles. They're kind of niche, they're kind of nice. They uh, they are uh, they are situational. They can be good, they can be great, they can be whatever. Uh, arguably, you could kind of remove this and replace it with other things. What are those other things? I personally do not know. I like the Ugin. Uh, but there are a couple of options. For example, when it comes to creatures, you can easily put in a Mega Godzilla if you want, you know, some kind of uh, early counter aggression instead of the Ugin. You can triple or double or quadruple on the Karns. There are Palladium Mares, there's the Foundry Inspectors. You know, there are options. There are definitely some options that you can go for instead of the Ugins if you want. But in my experience, like, for example, uh, Foundry Inspectors kind of more or less a bust most of the time. They don't exactly make anything faster, they just make it the deck will seem a more oomph if you get a Forsaken Monument drop. Then they seem good, but in reality they're not a win condition, they're not something that makes everything go faster or bigger. Technically, if you have two of these bad boys, now you can do some uh, turn 4 vintage spinach. Uh, but that's rare and abundant, not abundant. <clears throat> so, you know, you have options if you want to do other things. Uh, but that's pretty much it. I'm using bl uh, Blink Moth Nexus. It's a 1-1 one -one blocker, pretty decent. Uh, I am not using any of the classical lands that you are uh, that you usually see, aka Blast Zone. I don't find it too particularly useful here. If you're pumping and dumping a Blast Zone to 2 or 3 or whatever, chances are you have already lost, so it doesn't exactly matter. But, you know, a niche block like Blight Mod Nexus, why not? Uh, burial, uh, ruin, uh, bu buried runes, just so I can, you know, cycle things like the archives. And, you know, crawling barons, two inventor's fair. Inventor's fair is not a for, uh, a something you want four of. Even though this is a special land, it's kind of interesting because magic does not treat it as a special land. Uh, you very often start with it, then you don't start with it, then you draw... It's it, it acts like normal land, even though it is a special land. Librant, a Radiant Fountain, obviously, and Zelfrim's Void, obviously. 
You can fit the blast zone instead of the body drones, or you can fit whatever else you want, honestly, instead of the body drones. It's your prerogative. Uh, but yeah, this is the basic deck. 24 lands to be specific. And again, the sideboard. Also, we have meteor, golems, lithiforms. All of those are kind of useless. I would honestly, if you want to have a serious, you know. Uh, sideboard for this, then, you know, double uh, double up on Graf Diggers, uh, double up on the ship, double up on God Pharaoh's statue, and probably have one little form engine. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Anyway, without any further ado, let's just get a cracking and see what happens. And there was no video yesterday, because yesterday I was trying to make this deck, and I'm gonna have a rant a little bit later about that. So... By the way, if you want to support the channel, subscribe and like the video. Liking the video is pivotal for the channel because YouTube really takes that stuff seriously. So do that if you are, if you would be so kind. Let's find our first opponent and let's see how it is. One bad thing about playing this deck in Arena is the fact that Neo Storm is like the most popular counter, honestly, Arena ever puts against this. Neo Storm, it's like, if you are if you need to lose, trust me, Arena will find the only person in the world that plays Neo Storm deck and will put you up against it. That's like the biggest flaw, probably, uh, for these decks. Uh, but yeah, because in all my time, you know, I've played this game quite a bit, and I forgot Neo Storm even exists. Started replaying an Ugin deck and whoa! Look at all those people playing Neo Storm suddenly. I wonder where were they sleeping before? No one knows. Uh, but yeah, you can pretty much concede against Neo Storm decks. Unless you're getting like a turn 4 Ulamog drop and you can exile two lands, then don't concede. Otherwise, kind of a waste of oxygen, honestly. So, going first, getting a Guardian Idol, we will have a turn 5. Uh, turn turn whatever monument and that's gonna be good get to life let's see what this is i don't know what this is but if i get a land considering i see ragdolls oh wait is this a gates deck now it's just a poor ragdolls deck okay maybe it's not a poor ragdolls deck maybe it's I, I don't even know what that's supposed to be uh but things being things that means we can get the forsaken monument and this is pretty much well the pinnacle of house stuff. Woof! Someone's feeling frisky. Okay, okay. Uh, the good part is he can't... Yeah, there's, I don't think there's a way he can win. I could drop this, honestly, to force a little bit of stuff. But, you know, why bother, honestly, right? Uh, clearly, this is a win. This is not enough aggressive. If you play enough Ugin decks, you are pretty much going to be able to tell when you win or lose. Playing these things uh, becomes second nature, I should maybe say. A little bit aggressive, but we heal two, two every time we drop anything except the land. So, honestly, do you think this matters? I would say it doesn't matter. I'm going to drop the Ugin. That's going to be free real estate. A Libyrant of Scaphos, whatever. It doesn't matter too much. And yeah, now, uh... You know what? I'm gonna do something no one expects. Yeah, he can kill Dugan right there. Don't care too much about that one. Does it matter? Meh. No. Like, again, oh, I should've actually, like, seriously played stuff before, but, again, I do... Do I think it matters? No. No. Oh, uh, the only thing is, what do I want to actually do here? Hmm. Maybe I want to put something down that the protects? Eh, you know what? Why not? Let's just do it. It's a 6-6, six, six. what is he gonna do? He can't do anything against it. Let's see what he wants to do. Honestly, not playing this correctly at all. Uh, but the point is, if he wins, I'll take that loss. Like... Just basing from everything this guy has, there's no way he can win. We are like a couple of sacrifices away from achieving Nirvana, pretty much. I can go for the Skyship and it's gonna be amazing. Let's see what he does. Will he even attack? I kind of doubt that he will even attack. 
Do I want to get rid of the goblin or do I want to get rid of this? You may sacrifice a creep. Oh! Oh, some someone sees the tendies and someone wants to go for them tendies. Okay, well, this is alive still. And it doesn't matter. Again, it, like, very little matters here currently, which is kind of funny. I'm pretty much just baiting him for no reason. We could have... Oh, wow. He actually did it. What a champion. Well, the problem is, what a champion or not, you can call this a lucky draw or whatever, but the reality is, it doesn't matter. Again. Play enough of the, uh, play enough Ugandex, you are gonna be literally capable to see from, like, turn one, do you win or do you lose. It, it's that simple, boys. It's that simple. Do I wanna get this back? Maybe I do. It's neat that you can draw cards pretty easily when you have the Forsaken Monument with Buri Druins. But yeah, see? No reason to play correctly because it was pretty visible from his deck that we already won. It's, it's, it's a nice thing. Honestly, okay, like, honestly, this is one of the fastest decks because it's like, it, it takes only, like, 30 seconds to figure out can you win a game or is it a loss or something. And aggro decks are obviously one of the bigger things that kind of work against this. But, you know, then again, you need to kill, in average, you always need to kill this deck on turn 4. Every, anything slower than that just puts you at a disadvantage. Um, let's see. What the... Well, depends on what he is. Is he goblins or green goblins? I, because, again, you're gonna see a lot. Okay. Ah, now I don't feel that good about this anymore. Oh, uh, that's a Tefari deck. The Fari decks are annoying, uh, but these decks crumble to dust when one thing happens. One, it is extremely hard for uh, White Blue Control to actually deal with things like Crawling Barons and even Guardian Idols, which is kind of a hidden boon. Two, most of these decks com completely crumble to dust when one extremely unauspicious thing happens. And by the way, we also have this, which is even more damage to face. Ooh, a Narset. Wait, am I hitting you because I want to draw cards? I think I am. Brainstorm, you say? Okay, let's see it. Oh, I would really... Well, I have the land, so I guess it doesn't matter. I don't want him to draw extra with the Narset, and that's like the big thing here. Okay, don't draw extra with the Narset. Use the Brainstorm and do nothing. He does have a Field of Ruin, which honestly puts a damper on my pamper, but on average, I guess it's fine. Uh, Hand-wise, this is actually probably the worst I could have gotten against a blue-white uh, blue control deck, because it has no threats like Ugin, it has no Ulamog, and, well, you know, we only have Guardian Idols here. Technically, that's not bad, by the way. But it is probably the weakest hand that you could have gotten. Also, our ram kind of like fizzles out here because it's really inefficient with the Guardian Idol and the Polar Stone Shard combo. Uh, but nothing, no, nothing dramatic. Okay, well, there's the dramatic part. If I get that down, he just instantaneously loses. What a joy. Are you going to counterspell this? Because if you do, I don't care. Forsaken Monument is nice and everything, uh, but Forsaken Monument is not the thing that's gonna make or break things. Ooh, you memory lapsed it. So nice. Well, memory... Well, actually, with this, it's kind of annoying, I guess. But at the same time... Meh. Okay. Uh, do I want to do this... He has only three lands, so I guess there's a point. If he counterspells it again, I'm fine. Mostly, I'm kind of searching for that free Ugin drop. Didn't say please. Oof. Wow. Oh, God. He just milled both of my cards. Uh, for someone with three lands, this is going pretty swell for the guy, not gonna lie. <laughs> for someone with three lands, it's definitely going pretty swell. Okay, let's see. Again, I can threaten him. Ooh, well, that, 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 that pretty much solves issues. Okay, can I actually do this and still cast it? No. 
Damn it. Uh, Platinum Angel Fake. Let's see. If he gets the five lands now, by the way, it's gonna be pretty bad for us. Cancel. Oh my god, what are we playing against here? Didn't say please, memory lapse, cancel. I feel, yeah, well, he's not gonna do anything. The moment he starts dropping a bunch of lands, it's actually gonna get bad, by the way. That is the moment that I do not want to see. Okay, I'm killing Narsa this turn, most likely. I'm gonna s okay, okay, yeah, okay, this is fine. So, drop this. It is a counterspellable thing, by the way. Brainstorm. Okay, okay, that's good, that's good. He got the land, which means he's... How is he gonna do it? Uh, it would be currently the best situation ever if he just got uh, the uh, ro uh, rogi boy. A.K.A. I mean, obviously, our boy Wander from yonder. Olmog. That, that would just finish out the game. Because, again, we could exile two of his lands and he would have nothing. But, you know, I guess it is what it is. Okay, let's see. So, we can draw lands now. This is fine. I'm gonna drop the Power Stone shot, then I'm gonna drop the Ugin. Or I could drop the Ugin and... Ah! Oh! That's what I was looking for, my boys. Yep, that's the stuff. That is literally the stuff. This matters a lot. Why does this matter a lot? Mostly because I say so, but it's true. Okay, now I can do this. It's it's gonna attack, and now I can do this. Okay, now there's a substantial amount of things actually threatening him. Ah, oh, that Mulan Yan drop, dude. You saw how little cards I had in my in my disposal. You should have just waited. Now he's gonna kill this sooner or later, and that's the Ulmog, and I will be able to exile two of his lands. Honestly, the guy's pretty unlucky with the lands, but you know, for a counterspell deck, being unlucky with three lands is not actually the biggest deal in the world. As long as you can... <coughs> a viscosi? Viscosi! Nani? Okay, do I sag this and just get the stuff? Ooh, cheeky. Well, cheeky or not, I will literally just sag stuff and do things. Watch me. Okay. Oh, God. Okay, uh, plan B. Just exile the stuff. <laughs> oh boy. The, the, the guy's not. Boys. Boys. Trust when I say, say this guy is not exactly too ecstatic about stuff. I'm gonna obviously attack that. There's no reason to attack this, like, who cares? So, he has 3 mana, now he needs to deal with an Olmog. Man. I almost feel for the guy. I literally almost feel for the guy. Because this is a definite level of disgusting. Well, it's his fault to choose to play magic. No one forced him. No one forced him. Wait. Let's just... Let's just add a little bit more salt to the wound, shall we? Hey, it's literally a legit strategy, as they say. It's a legit strategy, okay? Okay, what do I want him? Ooh! Oh! Oh, he went for my inventor's fair. Oof. Man, that's actually not that nice. That's definitely not cool, yo. Okay, what do I want to exile, though? I probably want to exile that in one blue. Um, there's an Ugin also there. <laughs> oh god, this guy is so not happy about life. This guy is literally so unhappy about life. Now I'm gonna exile all the white. Why not, you know? Yeah, exactly. E e exactly. Okay, this, th yeah. I, I I almost feel for the guy, you know. I almost I almost really feel for the guy. 
Let me kill that. It's still gonna exile everything he has. Oh, he had a steam giant. Oh! Uh, this was... Yeah. Well, I should have probably understood uh, understood it from the Mulan Yang, but this was not a Tefari deck. Uh, this was a Gideon unkillable deck, you know? Big difference, you know? Big, big, big difference. Okay, what do I want to do? Probably block this. Honestly, it doesn't matter too much, but you get the point. Uh, that's just free real estate, as they say. My turn, of course, it's my turn. Uh, Blinky, Mothy, Nexus, and he surrenders. So, again, we're currently playing against things that we kinda can deal with. Counterspell decks can be really annoying. He definitely got unlucky the fact that how long he was on 3 man. Uh, but a counterspell deck being on 3 man against an Ugin deck is not exactly the worst thing. But playing a counter uh, counterspell deck in general against Ugin deck is quite annoying. Because technically you need to choose. What do you do? Do you counterspell the artifacts or you do, do you go for the big counterspell on the artifacts? Uh, if I get one land, I can play the Platinum Angel and, and I am uh, completely fine. Faithless looting, you say? Well, we're gonna figure... Oh! My man! Graf Digger's Cage is gonna be a Muchos Aprecianos. I hope I have a... I, I hope I find Khan. Because Graf Digger's Cage is gonna just... Oh, it's, it's gonna be beautiful. Let's see, three Fadeless Lootings, those... Th Wait a minute, that's illegal. Okay, interesting. But yeah, this is the reason why you can ditch the 6 cost uh, Ugin and sometimes go for the other stuff. It, it, it both have their good parts. Uh, he just discarded my Ulamog, but what do I care? Honestly, it depends on how many uh, Ulamogs he has in his deck. If he has like one or two, I... <gasps> Dude, come on! Oh, he's milling himself. Well, I guess that makes sense. Okay, that's actually better than nothing. Okay, do this for maximum mana efficiency, if that even means anything nowadays. I do have an Ulamog, I do have a Platinum Angel. There is a chance that he has literally nothing that kills Platinum Angel. Uh, when U Ulamog gets resurrected... He does not proc the Exile 2 effect. There's only a few cards that resurrect that proc the Exile 2 effect. So, there is a good chance that he does nothing. Okay, that though is gonna work against my angels. I don't like this, boys. Not gonna lie. I'm not liking... Okay, he just... Okay. Well, getting an Ashiok Uvu sounds... Okay. Two, four, five, six, seven. Man! We do have the Platinum Angel, but he can just literally resurrect. Well, it doesn't matter what he resurrects. We're, we're, yeah, we, we can't. We, we just can't. Yeah, a little bit too late on the cusp here. Well, technically... Can I actually do stuff here? I will be able to four, five, six, seven. I will be able to Ulama. <laughs> oh, oh! This was so not Arvin. That's just intentional. Okay, so yeah, we can't do anything, and he now he's milling us. Yeah, we can't. Yeah, we we had a minor chance of doing stuff, but it seems like that minor chance is not there. Okay, well, Resurrection decks are literally one of the strongest decks in the game. Because they kind of circumvent most things that can be done to them. Okay, well, man. Could, well, we, again, draw a card. Just, just draw one of the Big Daddy cards. Get a Grab Digger's Cage and you win. That's also a huge part about this deck, by the way, but we didn't draw a card. But sometimes you just, you, you know, you, you you see a deck like that, you have a con, you just you just press minus two and then, then it costs one. It, it's, it's a one mana cost card that completely shut the... It's glorious. Oh yes, it's glorious, boys. 
Let's see, an Ugin. Wow, this is a mulligan hand, it seems like. Three lands, not bad. Usually get two. Okay, yeah, this is good. Uh, four, five, seven. Seven mon- Oh, right, I need to actually ditch something. I'm gonna ditch the Guardian Idol. <clears throat> Zelfrim Void will still be lead me to success. Okay, if he's an aggro deck. Four... Five, seven. Let's just be safe. Let's go for the land. Even though I don't think it matters too much. Um, oh! Oh! Chandra Tribal! Okay! And here I was worried about stuff being slow. Chandra Tribal is fine. He gets to go first, which is honestly annoying. Uh, but technically... Technically, boys, you know how it is. I'm gonna play- I'm gonna press the Ugin button and it's- it's pretty much gonna be over. Chandra Tribal is cute and whatnot, but, you know, Chandra Tribal is Chandra Tribal. She's hot, but she's just, you know, hot because of the word hot. It, it's- it's- it, it is what it is. Okay, let's see this, and I think- I think the guy most likely understands what's about to happen. Because this th th this is very much uh, unreasonably undoubtable. Also, I have two Ugins. If he was an aggro deck, we this would be a pretty bad draw, by the way. Uh, but since he's a Chandra deck, it's like, who cares? Oh no! Wait, what? I don't use this Chandra because it was bad. And oh no, because I didn't want to spend. I, yeah, I did not want to spend all the all that stuff. Add you, it's it's quite a fine effect, you know. Well, oh, he goes for a Steamkin. Seriously, cat on purple. Well, Steamkins a kind of a fine choice, you know. But you know, d d dodgy. Ooh, with Fatalist looting, actually, Chandra decks could be like really a lot more powerful. Oh. I should revisit Chandra decks because, yeah, Fateless Looting plus Steamkins in Chandra decks could work. I never used Steamkin because there was no, uh, no good one cost card to actually use previously. Uh, but now, everything changes. Also, I can actually just do this if I want. This is 4 mana total. You use 3 mana to get 1 extra mana, essentially. It's a great deal, trust me. Okay, now I can minus six. Even if he does anything against this, it's like, do, do I care? It's one Ugin. I got literally more of them. And yeah, I think he... Uh, he well, he's definitely running a, uh, a, a single spot. It's most likely dead, but you know. Again, who, who cares? A Wily Goblin? Now that's questionable ramp, my boy. I guess he just wants to uh, get the utmost uh, value out of the Steamkins if he draws them. Plus he uh, plus he definitely wants, you know, something that po uh, pops light up the stage. You know, I, I would still call it questionable though. Definitely would call it questionable. And there's no reason to not do this, by the way, now. We're, ju we're just gonna cycle for more HP. <laughs> Ah, oh, well, it's Ugin Dex. What do you exactly expect, my boys? Yeah, he can't. He's he's most likely thinking, what happens if he gets a 6 cost Chandra and plays her and just puts an emblem on my face? Well, he's gonna probably not feel exactly bad about it. Uh, but he's gonna start to feel bad about it the moment I drop uh, uh, Ulamog. That's how it usually works. A Librant, not necessary. Look at this, boys. Yeah, that's what you call p p p p power Okay, slap that. Slap it like it's hot, because it is hot. It's Chandra. Deal with it. And there we had the Ulamog. Like, everyone's gangsta until someone drops an Ulamog. You know what I'm saying? You feel? Ah, yes. Yeah, this, this is why, by the way, you know, you, you put that crystal energy into your deck. Science, boys! Okay, one more. Or two more. Depends on my mood. I really enjoy playing Ugin Ulamog decks. What what can I say? I hate them, but I love them at the same time. You know, it's like a, 
uh, love and hate relationship. It's like a hot daughter which you can't exactly bang, but you secretly want to. God, I'm gonna be a great father. <laughs> uh, four man, this is not good, but this is not bad because we do have this and a fixerinos. I was banking on it because Platinum Angel. Now I just need to draw one thing. Oh, this is an Izzard deck. Uh, he may actually kill the stupid Platinum Angel, but then again on the other side, who cares? Uh, how much am I missing? One mana uh, off of Ugin. If I get one mana off of Ugin, it's gonna be great, because then I can just Tolomog next turn also. Oh no, this is Infinity Combo. Did we lose? <gasps> thank God. Oh, thank... Oh, dude. If you do not know how this works, it's just annoying. If you see a gutter snipe, you make him understand that he's not welcome. Yeah, kill that, no one cares, the, the, the play. Okay, so now I'm gonna drop a Platinum Angel and we're gonna see what happens. Alternatively... Shimmer of possible. Yeah, this is definitely an Infinity draw, uh, draw combo with Gutter Snipe, no question. Uh, I want to go for obviously that. It's it's a little bit better than Platinum Angel. And by the way, this situation is really common with U Ulamog slash Ugin decks. I seriously have absolutely no idea why it's designed like this. Wait, what? I can't cast it just yet? Well, whatever, this is still castable and I get two life. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, when you're gonna play these decks, you're not exactly gonna complain about it because it's technically kind of not matter-some to you for in, uh, in most situations. Uh, but it is a little bit annoying. The fact that you're gonna be stuck on like three or four lands. I'm not sure if that's just Arena trying to fix uh, how broken this deck is in kind of general layman's terms. Uh, but it is something that happens a lot. You're gonna be like, you're not gonna get lands. Your lands are gonna be your starting ramp cards. Uh, that's how Arena makes it to be. Again, no clue why that is, but it happens a lot that you're stuck on three or four lands. But, well, you know, you, you, you technically can't complain. Also, this guy probably doesn't exactly understand how over it is. Yep, well, okay, he understood how over it is. Ah, uh, well, what can you do when you have so much unlimited power? Ah, uh, as our good old friend Obi-Wan uh, Kenobi would say, UNLIMITED POWER! In a different accent, but you know, Obi-Wan's words are true, my boy. They, they are literally true. Also, fight me if you don't think he said that. He was secretly, uh, he was secretly the Dark Lord a Darth Vader all that time, by the way. Read the books, like Jesus Christ. Okay, Ugin, 5 mana. Another Ugin? Yeah, this is good. Because the chance, like, look at this. Chances are we're definitely drawing one land or drawing one thing, which will get us an Ugin, 6 cost, which will slow the game us uh, uh, for at least a turn. And that's gonna be great. And at best the case scenario, it's like draw one and something like that situation. So, you know, bonus points all around, as they say. Plus, Zelf and Void start is pretty good. Also, you know, uh, Blink Moth Nexus, why not? Okay, what is he gonna do? It depends on what our opponent's deck is, but you know, we have a winning combo right here. It's not the fastest, and again, I would, as always, love to go first. Oh, Fable Passage, I slow! Whatever you're playing, my dude, it's slow. Ah, oh, white life gain. A white life gain can be either a curse or a blessing, by the way. It can either be far too fast or far too slow. Oh! Maybe an angel deck? I'm not sure. You know, you, you can't be too sure usually on this type of stuff, but yeah. Interesting. Not really, but, you know, options. Options, options, options. Okay, next turn I can Power Stone, Shard, plus Guardian Idol, and that is gonna be 
six man or something like that. Essentially, again, it looks like it's a win. The moment you understand someone is not fast enough to kill your face until turn four, your chances of winning become astronomically higher. So yeah, uh, drop this bad boy, see what happens. Drop a guardian idol, see what happens. And next turn I can... If I draw a land, then I'm gonna play... Oh no! Literally the counter! DUDE! And again... I should probably guess... Decks that get literally card on turn 4. They also exist. There's a lot of them and they are uh, unreasonably annoying. If I get one land though, I can potentially win. I'm not sure what this deck is, but if I get one land, I know I can win. And if I get the second land, I know I can win after that, because we can actually kill the Khan. Ah! Come on! <laughs> Magic! I know he's on three lands, but it's kind of a little bit a lot unfair, you know? Okay, minus two, what does he get? If I get five lands, I can- Oh my god! Wait, he can't accept- Next- No! One land. One land to rule them all, boys. Let's do this. Oh, no! Dude! Yeah. But yes. Like, the only things that technically- There are only four decks in the whole of Magic that are reliably good against Dugan slash Olmog. Goblins, Green Goblins, Neo Storm, and usually, usually it's uh, the Paradox Engine Khan deck, but decks that use Khan. The decks that use Khan are always gonna have uh, Khan on turn four, and the decks, and you're not gonna get lands. By the way, that's that's also like a huge thing. You will not get lands when f facing against Khan decks. You will not get lands. You will get the two or uh, three man, and uh, and that's it. That's like super annoying, by the way. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much how it works. Also, this hand is pretty good. Platinum Angel. He could technically kill the Platinum Angel, but okay. Uh, painful, but not okay, Chief. If I draw a land, that meant nothing, and you just you know kind of screw yourself over there, buddy. Ooh. Suddenly it means nothing. Maybe he has another one. I'm actually willing to bet money he has another one of uh, of hand disruption thingies. Okay, as long as I drop the Forsaken Monument should be good. Pyrexian Arena! Oh, that's so slow, my dude! That is so slow! Oh, I'm almost sad for you because of how slow that is. Oh, no. No, no, my dude. Oh, Sedge! Okay, how- ooh, Rankle. Okay, so it's gonna be Exile on Rankle and Exile on one land. Why Exile on one land? Because I said so. Mostly. Okay, so I'm gonna sag the Platinum Angel. Kinda relevant, I know, but hey, it is what it is. Another one of those. Well, whatever. Okay, so Rankle is a must and one land. Uh, there's nothing for- there is a card that actually, like, exiles Ugin for 3, but, you know, it's it's not happening. Let's be real. It's most likely never happening. So, you know, bonus points. A Skelly Boy? Yeah, Skelly Boy's fine. Another Skelly Boy? It's fine. Uh, there is... Okay, yeah, now there's definitely a very, a very arduously huge point about actually, like, doing this. Is he gonna block? No, he doesn't. Okay, that's questionable, but that's fine. Okay, so now I'm gonna just exile... Well, actually, just the two lands. Yeah, that's that's completely fine. Okay. Obvious things are obvious, but, you know, chances are he's gonna kill himself before anything happens. Uh, plus bonus points, a third Olamog. Uh, but yeah. I, there was, by the way, if you did not know, a time we actually tried to reach, uh, what's it called? 
a rank 1, but it was impossible, because at a certain level, because I am a PR disaster for wizards, uh, the only four decks I encountered were exactly the counters that I named. Goblins, Green Goblins, Neo Storm, and uh, you, usually it was the Paradox Engine card decks, but yes, card decks. Card decks against whom you usually were stuck at three lands. And all your lands were replaced with uh, a ramp, a ramp artifacts. So yeah, it's a great deck. It's a very strong deck. Obviously a tier 1 deck that can easily co uh, fight for, you know, uh, the number 1 position in, in the Mythic Ladder. But, you know, there are minuses. I would say, again... Probably ditch the three, uh, the six cost Dugan and either double up on all the cards, or put in this bad boy. Like it's gonna be extremely situational. Is this gonna be good or is it gonna be bad? Uh, but at least it's an option. At least it's an option, and it helps against enemy cards and whatnot. Uh, but yeah, this was. Because they're since then. Thanks for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already. Check out the channel. Check out the Discord. Check out the Patreon. Check out the everything. And have a nice day. Bye bye.